All right, we're going to practice um, identifying what the dependent and independent variables are in linear equations. Um, but first, I want to look at dependent and independent variables in some concrete situations um, just to make the, the concept more intuitive, and then um, we'll kind of work backwards from there. Um, so. So ignore this for a second. The dependent variable is the variable whose values depend, uh, sorry, whose value depends, oops, whose value depends on the value of the other variable. All right, so we're dealing with linear equations. You're going to have two variables. Uh, a lot of times we call them x and y, but you can call them whatever. Um, the variable whose value is determined by the value of the other variable is called the dependent variable because it, it depends on the other variable. Um, another way to look at it is the dependent variable is the output, quote unquote, of a function. So if you have, let me just draw that. So if you have, um, I don't know if you've looked at function notation in a while, but if you have f of x equals um, 2x, what that means is you plug an x into this machine and here's what it does to the x so it multiplies it by 2 and you you get out you know whatever so if you plug a 3 into this it goes into the machine and gets multiplied by 2 and becomes a 6 if you plug a 5 into this it gets multiplied by 2 and it becomes a 10 um so so this whole thing would be the dependent variable um the thing because it depends on what you plug into it you know what you put into the machine so that's that's the dependent um, this is independent because it, you can just plug in whatever you get to choose what you know in a sense w what you want to put in uh, um, so yeah so you know we call this f of x you can also call this y so y equals 2x so this this can be a way to identify dependent and independent um, a lot of times the dependent variable will be just by itself and the independent variable will be you know in the machine doing all the stuff um, but it doesn't always work that way I mean you can write an equation any way you want um, but this makes it very explicit that that y is the dependent variable because it depends on uh, you know what happens to x inside the machine if that makes sense all right, so let's look at three um, concrete examples and then talk about how, how the idea of being dependent or independent kind of makes sense in these concrete examples. Um, and then hopefully, hopefully it'll be easier to identify dependent and independent variables. Um, so these are linear equations that describe things in real life. Um, so if you were to graph these, you'd see some kind of straight line. Um, so we've got distance uh, in meters equals five times the number of seconds. So distance equals speed times time. So um, basically I'm going five meters per second. So if I go five meters per second for one second, I've gone five meters. If I go five meters per second for two seconds, I've gone ten meters. If I go five meters per second for three seconds, I go fifteen meters, right? So the distance that I go depends on how long I'm traveling. If I go five meters per second for sixty seconds, uh, you know, then I'm what is that? Three hundred. I've gone three hundred meters, right? So this distance, what I get for a distance, or th the distance that I go, depends on how long I'm traveling at five meters per second, right? So seconds would be the Alright, so distance would be the dependent variable. It depends on how many seconds I go. Uh, and seconds, therefore, would be the independent variable. Because, uh, in other words, um, the... Well, I could rewrite this so that it's the other way, but anyway, let's just leave it at that. Um, Alright, here's another example. Um, where, okay, so P plus... 62.5 D 
equals 217. I don't know. What, is, what, is, what does all that mean? Uh, this I looked up. So P is water pressure measured in pounds per square foot. And then D is the depth in feet. So the water pressure plus 62.5 times the depth is equal to um, 217. Now, uh, I don't have a nice little thing where there's a variable on one side of the equation, so it's so it's obvious to see what the the outcome, the output is, or the what the dependent variable is. But let's think about this. What is this describing? Um, what I'm describing in this situation is the deeper you go, you know, let's say in the ocean. Here's the ocean. Let's make that blue. Here's the ocean. Uh, the farther down I go, the higher the water pressure is. That's why if you go super far down, you know, you would get crushed. That's why you have to be in a submarine, right? Because the, the water pressure is just immense. So, so there's actually the relationship between water pressure and the depth that you go is a linear relationship. You could write it as a linear equation, right? So it would be it would be something like, um, you know, as my uh, if, as my depth increases, my water pressure increases. You know, something like that. If my pressure is here, um, depth there. So now the way the equation is written, I don't have this like nice little variable by itself defined in terms of another variable. You know, but looking at the situation, what's dependent and what's independent? Um, well, clearly the water, I don't know, I say clearly, it, it's not really that clear, but think about this for a second. The water pressure increases as you go down. So the, the water pressure depends on how far down you are. So the water pressure is the dependent variable, and the um, depth is the independent variable. So I could choose to go to this depth and then there would be a certain water pressure. I could choose to go to this depth, there'd be a certain water pressure. So given that the water pressure is the dependent variable, it's, it d depends on whatever the depth is, um, it'd be nice if I rewrote this equation so it would look more like that. So I could, re I could rewrite this as, um, so I could subtract 62.5d just to get it to the other side. Um, so I could, I, could, I could rewrite that as p equals um, um, negative sixty, negative sixty-two point five d plus seventeen. So then it then it becomes kind of clear. Uh, you know, this thing is the result of doing all this to this thing. So this is the dependent variable. It depends on what goes on over here in the machine. This is the independent variable because it's uh, not the dependent variable. Um, so by convention. When we're graphing these relationships, we put the independent variable on the x-axis. Why? That's just the way it is. Um, and by convention, we put the dependent variable on the y-axis. So usually, uh, so yeah, so a lot of times, so for example, yeah, so I could have on my x-axis here um, feet, you know, depth in feet, so as as I get deeper and deeper into the ocean, then the water pressure is going higher and higher and higher, like that. So this would be water, you know. So um, so that's just the way we do it, uh, just by convention, or that's the way it's agreed upon to do, so that when we look at a graph, whatever is on the x-axis, we know that's the um, independent variable, and whatever is on the y-axis, that's the dependent variable. It's just so, you know, everyone's on the same page, basically. So that means if if you're given just an equation that's just you know y and x y equals one third x plus a trillion or you know twelve whatever, um, you know because we graph the dependent variables on the y-axis and the independent variables on the x-axis, you can you can just kind of look at at that and say oh yeah it's the dependent variable, and that's that's the independent. Just by convention, it's done that way. Uh, now you can—I mean—you can rewrite this equation so that it, it goes the other way. Um, but that's sort of defying convention, so don't do that. I mean, you can do that. It's just confusing. All right, so let me give you one more example. Um, 
I've got this equation, the solubility, um, you know, the amount of something that can be um, dissolved into, let's say, water, uh, is equal to 0.47 times T, uh, that's temperature in, in degrees Celsius, plus 2.26.8. Uh, and these numbers are, you know, weird decimals because this is uh, based in reality. This is really what the equation. I forget what the solute is actually. To be honest, I think it was solid maybe. Um, so the solubility, uh, the amount of of something that the water can dissolve, um, is a function of temperature. So what this means is the hotter uh, the more you heat up that water, that tank of water, uh, the more the more stuff can be um, dissolved into it. This is what that is what that is saying. So the the dependent variable is the solubility. So that's changing as the temperature changes. So any, I mean, you know this from everyday experience. Uh, if you want to make a cup of tea, you gotta heat the water up, right? So the the, the water um, can um, can dissolve the uh, whatever's coming off the tea leaves, right? If you just have a um, cold cup of water and you put a tea bag in it, not much is going to happen. Or if you want to dissolve a whole bunch of salt into some water, heat it up, you'll be able to dissolve a lot more. Okay, so um, so solubility is the independent variable, and the temperature is the or solubility is the dependent variable, and temperature is the uh, in, uh, independent. And you can think of that like you get to decide how much you're going to heat up the water, right? So it doesn't really the temperature of the water only really depends on you. It doesn't depend on the solubility. Um, so yeah. So and I and I wrote the equation so it looks you know it looks like what it's saying, where the dependent variables over here by itself as a result of all this stuff that's happening to the independent variable.